So in this video, I'm going to go through an example of how to calculate the rate of an enzyme uh, using some biochemical techniques. So the enzyme that we're going to be thinking about is an enzyme called isocitrate dehydrogenase. Uh, so this is in uh, this is in the Krebs cycle. It's one of the reactions in the Krebs cycle. Um, and what that uh, enzyme does is to catalyze the, catalyze the reaction isocitrate plus NAD plus goes to alpha ketoglutarate plus CO2 plus NADH. OK, so um, that's the reaction that the enzyme is, cal uh, is catalyzing. And that makes it a relatively straightforward uh, enzyme to quantify its rate because it produces NADH. And NADH is able to directly absorb light. Um, and it's um, particularly good, or it's the best um, wavelength to measure it at, uh, is at 340 nanometers. So uh, if I just quickly draw what the absorption spectra of this looks like. So if this is wavelength uh, and this is absorbance, then um, the peak for NADH looks a bit like this. Um, so we have a peak um, at around about uh, 280 nanometers and then another peak uh, at around about 340 nanometers. So you might be asking, well, why don't we measure it at 280 nanometers? That seems like a bigger peak. Well, um, it's because uh, NAD also absorbs light and it has an absorbance spectrum that looks like this. So NAD plus also absorbs at 280, but it doesn't absorb at 340. So if we measured at 280, then we'd be measuring both things all the time and we wouldn't be able to see what was going on. But if we measure at 340, then we can selectively measure NADH in the spectrophotometer. Um, so uh, we set up our experiment uh, as a spectrophotometer experiment. So we'd set it up so we have got a cuvette. And as you know, we pass light through the sample. Um, so we have our incident light, I0, and our transmitted light. And the ratio between those two uh, we know is log 10 uh, of I0 over I. Um, so there's another video uh, about where that maths comes from. But what the spectrophotometer will do, actually, is to give you an absorbance value. So um, that's what the spectrophotometer is, is doing. But we can go straight over here to some data that we've got from the spec. So the spec is doing this maths for us, and it's just giving us an absorbance value. And this is the data that we've got. So the question is... What is the rate of reaction expressed um, as micromoles of NADH produced per litre per minute? So that's the same thing as just micromolar NADH per minute. So per minute, uh, if it's got time in it, then that's a rate. So we want to find out the rate of reaction in terms of NADH produced uh, in micromoles per uh, micromolar per litre. Okay. So we need to use this data to find out this value here. So this is an absorb set of absorbances. And one of the things you should do uh, just before going into any maths is to just think about well, what's the overall profile of the reaction? What does that look like as a graph? OK, so uh, if I draw that graph out, obviously you do this uh, properly um, um, using Excel or whatever. But if I do this graph, what I find 
because it's got that sort of a shape. Okay, so this is not one, two, three, four, five minutes. So the first bit of the graph is mostly a straight line, but then it sort of starts to taper off there. So if we're going to find a rate, um, then I would do that in the linear portion of the graph. We can use that to get a rate. If we use the whole graph, we'll underestimate the rate of the enzyme because it's kind of starting to tail off just because it's running out of substrate. But if we do it in the linear portion, then that should be an accurate rate calculation. So I think there's three steps to do uh, for this calculation. The first step is, if we're going to do it, it's NADH producer. We need to find the change in absorbance. which we can call delta A340. So we'll use the linear portion. So I would do, so delta A340, if we're going to use just the first three minutes, is 0 0.621 minus 0 0.012. So we're just subtracting those values out. So how much has the absorbance changed? So that gives us an answer of 0 0.609 in three minutes. Okay, so that's how much the absorbance has changed. The second thing to do um, is to divide by time to get a rate. So then we've got delta A340 per minute equals 0 0.609 divided by three equals 0 0.203 absorbance units uh, per minute. OK, so we've got the minutes bit sorted out. Now what we need to do is to go from absorbance to concentration using Beer's Law. So Beer's law says that absorbance equals concentration times by the molar extinction coefficient times by path length. So therefore, concentration is going to be absorbance over those two things there. Okay. Um, so the ex molar extinction coefficient for NADH is 6220 per mole per centimetre, okay? And our cuvette is almost certainly one centimetre, okay? Because we nearly always use cuvettes of that. So now we've got all the information that we need. So our absorbance was 0.203 divided by 6220 times by one. And that gives us an answer of 3.2 two six times ten to the minus five molar uh, per minute okay which is just a slightly funny unit to leave it in so what we would usually do is to convert that to micromoles okay so that is the same thing as thirty two point six micromolar per minute so um, just to see where that's come from. Um, so uh, one molar equals uh, 10, equals one million micromolar is the same as one, is same as 10 to the six micromolar. Okay, so what we've done is uh, to get from that unit there to that unit there, what we've done is to times by 10 to the 6 in order to get it in micromolar. Okay, so there's three steps to our calculation once we've kind of just checked what we're doing. The first thing is our change in absorbance. So we're saying, okay, the first three minutes look like the best on the graph. We'll use the first three minutes. So we do time at 3 minus time 0. We then divided by the number of minutes. So in that case, that was three minutes to get a rate. And then we use Beer's law, so A equals C epsilon L 
rearrange that and put the numbers in to get our answer and then the last thing to do is to convert it to micromolar at the end of the calculation.